Okay. I'm swimming. And I'm April. So first we're going to talk a little bit about us to explain our inspiration for this project. All right, so in terms of our technology background, we have been a part of Technology Student Association for the past four years. That includes going to the state competition every year in order to present our projects. And then freshman year, we took technical drawing with Mr. Combs, and sophomore year, we took engineering design. And then I have been the recipient of the NCWIT Aspirations and Competing Award at the Colorado level. NCWIT stands for National Center for Women in Technology. So now we'll go into a little bit about our sports background, which you'll see we've done many sports in our time. As you can see here, we've been playing soccer for many years. And then we also played volleyball for a couple years. And finally, we have been swimming since 2003, and we are currently still swimming, and we will be swimming next year at the Colorado School of Mines. All right, so swimming has been a large inspiration for our project. So because of our swimming background, we wanted to do a project that implemented that. So a lot of our focus is pace training and swimming, and one of the products currently in use is called the Tempo Trainer. So what it does is it, you set it to a certain time, and it beeps every time you get to that time. So say you wanted to go 30 seconds for a 50. So every 50, it, uh, every 30 seconds, the Tempo Trainer will beep and then you should know that you should be at the wall for your 50 at that point. However, this is really poor accuracy. I've used it many times, and one of the problems that I've often had is that I'm already flipping when it beeps, so I don't actually know what my actual pace was. So now we'll go a little bit into Swimming 101 so you understand what exactly it is we're talking about for those of you who are not actually swimmers. So the pace that you set is basically the one you want to go during practice in order to get a certain time at a swim meet. So say Mia at the state meet wanted to go a 459 in her 500 freestyle. This means that she had to average uh, about a minute every 100 or 59 for one of them. This means that every 50 she would be able to go 30 seconds. So we want to make sure that when she does her 50s at practice she was holding at least 30s in order to make sure that she would be able to get it at the actual state meet. By the way, at state, I didn't go 459. I went a five but below. Still better. <laughs> All right, so in terms of what we wanted to do with the project. So we wanted to actually design an iOS application that could be read by the coach so that they know what the swimmer's pace is during practice. So to do this, we would need to actually create a device that would that would be able to relay that information to the application for the coach. And so we also wanted a product that limits the drag force because when you're in practice, you would only use that device and you don't want to have that extra drag because it wouldn't give you 100% accurate paces so then your actual place time could be different. And then finally, we wanted to use a Bluetooth connection in order to be able to relay the information. So here you can see a bit of an animation. So we would have a small device attached to the swimmer, and then it would relay information to the application. So the coach on the deck could see what your pace was as you were swimming. All right, so here was my initial plan for the actual application. So in terms of research, I wanted to learn objectives seen through code school in order to be able to actually program an iOS application in Xcode. And then I would have to look into actual iOS development through Code School and able to be, in order to be able to actually create the device that I wanted to use. And then finally, I would need to look at programming, act, programming the actual device so it would be able to function. And then looking at the microprocessors that would be implemented into our device. So my overall objectives, I wanted to have a working iOS application that could be used as well as be able to look at marketing that application. I didn't actually get into marketing because I didn't have a working iOS, the well, application is working, but it's not working with the device yet, so marketing that would not be necessary. And then I have no experience with code, to be honest, I've kind of tried a few things on my computer, just kind of for fun, because why not? 
but um, I haven't learned programming yet. So that was one of my main objectives for this, to be able to use that skill. And then that was a part of just reaching out to additional field studies. So my main technology background has been in SOLIDWORKS and in design process. And so I wanted to reach out into coding with this project. And then just also with that Bluetooth connection between the devices, I wanted to be able to create that. So now I'm going to talk more about the device portion of this. So in research, we talked about how we wanted to connect the device via Bluetooth. So obviously I had to research Bluetooth in order to find out, okay, how can we use this? And then I also had to find out how to waterproof the device because you don't want a device to track your pace not to be waterproof and break as soon as it isn't. And in the device, I had to learn more about the circuitry that they use in the devices to make sure it was safe to use. And as we stated before, I wanted to limit the drag force. So my goals. I obviously wanted to make the prototype on SOLIDWORKS because that is the technology I've used in the past. And then with this prototype, I wanted to actually make a waterproof device that transferred information from, its, from itself to the app so the coach can see it. And one thing that we weren't able to accomplish, unfortunately, because we ran out of time, but we wanted to do was earn our CSWPs in SOLIDWORKS. Hopefully, I'll just look at that eventually. And we wanted to actually have a working prototype. In order to do all of this, I would need to use SOLIDWORKS that you see in a second. I, this is the technology I used to actually design the prototypes. And then we printed them out on the 3D printer. And I used those. All right, so our intended final outcome for this project was to have the functional iOS application that could be used by a coach, as well as one prototype that would work to collect the information, as well as an active Bluetooth connection between the two. So now we're going to describe our company logo that you're supposed to see in the top corner at all of these, but for some reason it's cut off. I apologize. I don't know what's going on. So here is our company logo. As you can see, it has a blue color. This is obviously to represent water because we are a swimming company. And then it has four water droplets on it, and one of them is black to kind of create a nice contrast so it kind of stands out more with, than just the blue design. And then the name is Swim It, is, and it represents swimming because that is what our intended purpose is, but it also represents Summit, which is the kind of peak training that we wanted to use for this technology to get your pace faster in order to do well in meets. Plus I saw, I thought it sounded <laughs> All right, now we're going to get into our advisory committee. I would like to thank all of them for being with us today. It really means a lot to us with our project. So first we have Mr. Chappell. He is the program manager at Canoe Ventures, and he really helped us with the business side of it. He always makes us think about what we learned with this project and how we could improve upon it in the future. And then Mr. Jeff Paoni, he's a teaching associate professor at the Colorado School of Mines. He really helped give me guidance on the application side of it. And then we have our support advisors, our parents, Terry and Brian. I hope a lot of you know them because they, all, they both teach here. So we have a science teacher, it might be them. And then our older sister, Kayla, she is currently working on getting her PhD in engineering physics in Texas. And she really could help to give us a lot of advice because she's been through a lot of this stuff before and that was really helpful. And then finally, Alexa Lair. A lot of you may not know this if you know her, but she used to swim with us at Chaparral. And then she's also in this class. So now let's talk about our job shadow. I'm sure a lot of you have been to SeaWorld before. We went over fall break to the SeaWorld at Orlando and we were able to complete our job shadow <coughs> with Mr. James Howard, who is a supervisor from the plant engineering department. As you can see here, there are two pictures of rides. The first one is Antarctica, Empire of the Penguins. When we went on this ride before meeting with Mr. Howard, we noticed that it did not have a track that the ride, the cart followed. We were very confused on how it knew where to go without a track. So when we asked him about it, he told us that there were transponders with RF chips on the floor. So through the use of Wi-Fi, the cards were able to kind of track the motion and figure out where they needed to go. 
this is a very technical system, as he told us, because sometimes when the workers had their radios, they couldn't set it to a certain frequency, or else it would mess up the entire ride. We actually experienced this with like an hour-long wait outside of the ride as they tried to fix it. He also showed us one of my personal favorite rides because it's a roller coaster, the Kraken. And while we were there, he took us more to the back part of it, and we noticed that part of the car, uh, one of the cars was going under, undergoing its annual inspection, in which they completely replace everything on it. They replace nuts and bolts, they replace all the metal, they do everything. And so he showed us how much they put into putting the safety. He also explained to us the redundancy in the safety mechanisms of the roller coasters. For example, the shoulder straps on one of the other rides, the Manta, they actually put you on your stomach while you're going through the ride. And obviously this adds more concern for safety. So what they actually do with the safety straps is they put a bolt in. So if there's an electrical problem, the passengers will still stay safe because that extra bolt will keep them locked in. All right, now we're going to talk about our timeline, how it started, and kind of the changes we made to it throughout the year. So as you can see here, for the month of October, it was mainly involved in research because we weren't quite sure what we were going to do with the actual project yet. We were, at first, initially we were planning on doing two different devices that relate information to each other, that's not what we did at all. We made one device and made it a lot simpler. So obviously we had to do research to get there. I was doing Bluetooth research, as I mentioned before, and waterproofing. Well, Mia was already done. All right, so then in November, we just continued building upon that research. At this point, it started becoming more defined because we had an idea about what we wanted to do. And then I continued working. I finished Objective-C and started working at actual iOS application development. So then in December, I was actually able to start designing the small device. We called it the small device when we were initially planning on making two. However, this ended up being our only device. This was then in SolidWorks, and I designed all parts of it in actually a couple days. It turned out I didn't need as much time as I thought I did, because I'm going to have for SolidWorks than I thought it was. But we had the body, the clip, and the entire assembly. And we had started to program for this and designing the application. All right, so in January, originally we planned on working on a large device, but since that no longer became necessary, it helped to kind of open up our timeline a little bit. So it was actually able to print the first prototype, which is seen here. So we'll go in a little bit more in detail about that later. And then I continued working on developing the foundation for the application and working on the libraries for the actual project. So then in Fe February, this is our original plan. As you'll see in the next slide, it's completely different. We had to make a new slide to show this. So we planned on actually manufacturing both devices then because we figured, okay, I'll have them designed. We can print them and start completing the circuitry. Well, Mia thought she was gonna somehow make chips for them and so they could program them so they'd work. This is not what we did. We ended up just making, as you'll see later, I have many different designs of the actual device go into depth Y, and so I was modifying and testing it with waterproofing and Mia was still working on the programming because as we stated she had to learn a coding language. All right then in March we were able to actually get the Bluetooth connections and we start able to continue working on the testing and modifications. This was really the last model where we worked on the project so we wanted to make sure it was as functional as functional so in this month, April, we were basically preparing for these presentations. We had to design our posters, we had to make sure the binder had all its necessary components, and we had to practice for this presentation. Okay, so now I'm going to go more into depth of what I actually did for the device. So as you can see here, this is the finished prototype that I made. This is the rendering of it in SolidWorks, and then that is the picture of it actually printed. Uh, you can see it over here. This is the actual device. I attached it to uh, goggles, so it would sit on the back of your head right here. And so it would go with the swimmer throughout the training. And it actually would sit out of the water because when the swimmer is swimming, this 
water, their head is at the surface of the water, so it actually sit out in order to have an accurate Bluetooth connection because Bluetooth tends not to work underwater and it would create less drag because it is up. So how did I get to this point? So I first began researching and I began researching other devices that are in existence for the swimming. And this Garmin Swim I received for my birthday this year and I actually used it in practice. It goes on the wrist and it's supposed to track, it counts how much you swam and then when you get home you're supposed to be able to upload the data and it's supposed to tell you, okay, this is what you, times you were going, this was your pace. However, when I used it, for one thing, it was very bulky and I did not like the design of it. I was very annoyed and I hated it. And we also found it to be extremely inaccurate when we were doing hundreds in practice and it counted them as 75s. Obviously inaccurate. So then we were trying to figure out, okay, what technology are we going to use to actually connect the devices? So I found, or Mr. Combs suggested GPS tracking because it could track the, the device as it went through the water. However, when I looked into this, I found, okay, GPS does not work underwater, or in the doors actually. I was like, okay, how does the Garmin swim work? Because Garmin is known to use GPS technology. So then I started to look into the actual devices that GP, or Garmin has, and I found that the ones that use GPS are actually used in open water swimming because that is outdoors and the GPS will work. It will not work indoors. So I didn't know what we were doing yet, so I was like, okay, well, let's keep looking. So then I started to look at waterproof sealants because I was like, okay, what can I put on the device in order to make it waterproof? So I looked at the company P2i and I found they had a nanotechnology called nanocoating. And as you can see in this picture, there's a foam that was used with nanocoating and it was left in a fish tank with water for hours. And there was no damage done with no case or anything. And this nanocoating allows for a perfect seal around the foam in order for no water to get in. However, I can't use this on the device because it must be opened and closed and I can't stay sealed. So that would not work. So then I had to look at water ratings. I had to look at, okay, what are the devices that most people use and what are they rated and what would ours need to be? I found that most of the devices that people use for their athletic training are actually the ones that are running, they're actually the three atmosphere. They're everyday use, they don't do swimming, they can handle the occasional splash, but nothing for swimming. So then I found that according to this chart, we need a 10 atmosphere rip water rating in order for it to actually handle the swimming and snorkeling. So then my research told me that I would need many different components in order in this device in order for it to work. I found that I would need an accelerometer, a gyroscope, flash memory, microprocessor, and a battery. I think Neo was handling the microprocessor, so I was like, okay, let me find the accelerometer, gyroscope, and flash memory. For the accelerometer, I found the ADXL335 from Adafruit. This is a three-axis accelerometer to measure X, Y, and Z axis as well as the going. And then coupled with the gyroscope, which I found to be the Polulu L3GD20H, which measures the roll pitch and yaw, the device could actually follow the swimmer while they were going and measure their movement. And then the flash number I found, you can read the seal here, I don't memorize it. I don't want to. But this is a 64 megabyte flash memory that will measure your time for 116 minutes, which a normal swim practice is two hours, so that's about perfect. So finally, I had to research, okay, how are we gonna actually connect these components to the microprocessor to relay information? While I was researching, I found out the accelerometer and gyroscope needed to be connected to the same ports. That could not work if they were separate. So I found the MP6050 pictured here from InventSense that combines a three-axis accelerometer and a three-axis gyroscope in order to watch the summer swimming. And first I ordered just the MPU and it was about this big, you could hardly see it, and we had no way to connect it. So then I found out we needed this breakout board, as you can see here. So the big blue part is the actual breakout board, and then the small black part in the middle is the actual MPU. I needed to order that too. 
So now we'll get into designing because I have finally done with my research. So here you can see the very first design. It it's very circular, compact, and durable, and it has a logo. I don't know how I did that in SolidWorks, somehow I managed it. You can see here. However, as Mia pointed out, it has no way to open. Therefore, we cannot get any of the components into it. Obviously not able to use. So now into the second design. So as you can see, it now has a separate attachment with screws to make a tight seal. Great, now we can get the components in. However, as Mr. Combs pointed out, generally you want an O-ring in order to create a better waterproof sealant. This square sheet would not allow for a nice O-ring because, as you know, O-rings are circular. So, back to the designing. So here's the third design. It has a more circular shape, as you can see. It's not quite a circle, but I thought a circle on the back of the head would be very odd. So it has the O-ring implemented prototype design. So here you can see the prototype printed, the front view and you can kind of see the side view. It is a very solid construction and very compact. However, when we tried to put the actual microprocessor in, it did not fit because we had a lack of communication and messed up there. So it did not work. And I also found out somehow I messed up one of the sides, the thickness. I made it too small, so one of the sides was actually pliable. And the other side, I think I actually messed up somewhere, so I have to go back and fix that also. So here's my fourth and final design. As you can see, it has the same overall shape as the last one. However, it has this extra protrusion in order to make enough space for the Arduino to actually fit. It is also compact and is very sturdy. However, I had to move the screws to the other side because the, I did not want going in on the angled surface because I did not think screwing into an angled surface to create a waterproof sealant would be a very good plan. And we found out in the actual prototype, it does not bite very well into this angled surface, so I'd probably have to add some thickness to it in order for it to, to screw in better to create a better seal. So here you can see the final prototype. Again, you can see it has its base, the attachment, the O-ring is pictured here. I custom made it with a uh, cloth material at home. It took a long time to get the right shape. And then the two clips, which we can use a strap. I also have it here. And as you can see, I put some of my old goggles into the strap, and it just works. And you can, if we actually went into production, we would probably make a custom strap for this. All right, now in terms of my work with the application. So for my research, I looked at data collection of April. So what an accelerometer does is it has crystals inside of it that when they vibrate, they create a voltage that helps it to detect the acceleration in three axes. So that would help to collect the certain data because when you have a flip turn, your accelerations in all three directions changes so greatly that it helps to stop the time. So it knows that's when your that's when your pace is set. A gyroscope also benefits that. So the gyroscope uses the force of gravity, which is one constant direction, as a reference orientation. So then when the orientation changes, it can detect that. And then, so when we talked to Mr. Howard in Orlando, he recommended we were having a large problem with figuring out how we are going to make it communicate. Because we wanted to use Bluetooth technology, but we were worried with the fact that it didn't work underwater. So he suggested underwater transponders. So we looked into that, and one of the products I looked at was the Sonic Tech the Atlantis tracking device, which is actually used by divers. And they use it to help track their partners in case anything happens. We eliminated transponders from our plan because they were quite, they can't communicate with very well with these on the surface. So that would help when the coach wanted to figure out your case during practice. All right, and then I looked at the microprocessors. I focused on the Arduino products. And so first I looked at the Nano because I like the size, but I wasn't sure about how to use it 100%. I didn't think it would have the accurate processing power for what I wanted to do. So I eliminated that along with the Blend Micro. The Blend Micro had some Bluetooth capabilities, but I wasn't sure if that would, yet again, have the right processing power. 
And so I decided on using the Arduino Uno because that can, it has a large processing power, it's pretty simple, it was easy for me to use, and it automatically paired with the Bluetooth Low Energy Shield. So that would help me to easily create the Bluetooth connection between the device and the iOS application. Then I had to look into soldering. I needed it for the wiring, and Mr. Combs helped me with that, so that was really nice. And then, so using two different coding languages, I had to find a way to make them communicate. So my advisor actually suggested using Apache Cordova to help with that. And then finally, I had to learn how to use libraries in Arduino to actually get the microprocessor to function. All right, so what I got done overall, in terms of the actual application, I was able to form a basic application that can be viewed by the coach. So here's the main screen. I basically just added one start button. It goes to a different view that shows the time. This is the storyboard feature in Xcode that helps you to select what feature and put it on and then and program what you want it to do. So this really helped me to, you know, to facilitate what I wanted to do with the application with my lot of experience. And then this is evidence of the actual Bluetooth shield connecting to my iPod here. So I was able to get connection between it with the Bluetooth application and then I implemented that into my own. All right, in terms of the Arduino application, I created libraries that help to connect this and this with this so they could communicate properly. This is actual data that I collected with the MCU. So this is free access information of it sitting still with it. And I have other data with it moving too, but this was the clearer picture of what I wanted. And then also, this is an example of the code for the MVP library that is implemented into the RP component. All right, some of the roadblocks that I had along the way. So with my experience, lack of experience with electrical engineering and coding, I was really nervous about which Arduino chip I wanted to order. I finally just decided which one I wanted to do, but that kind of held me back in working on it a little bit. And as I stated before, my lack of coding experience really didn't help with the fact that I took on a product that was so code heavy. And that really, it was really hard for me to be able to do all that with it. And then finally, when you're trying to create an iOS application, you can only use Xcode on a Mac. And I have a Mac at home, but I don't have a laptop. So what I did, since I wasn't able to work on it in school, I would get some of my homework done during class, and then I would go home so I had that extra time and actually work on the application there. So now we're going to talk about, okay, where could we go from here? How could we improve this project? Obviously, this is a lot larger than I intended it to be, this device. That is purely because of the microprocessor. We got one that works, but we would like it to be smaller, and in order to fix this, we would make a smaller microprocessor. We would also try to improve the functionality of it. We would try to fix the code and make sure it actually sends the data to the right places. We would also, we were focusing on freestyle, basically, when we were making this, because it is the most basic stroke and it's the one we do most practice. We would want to make sure that our research so that this technology will work and detecting the various strokes we would like to make work to make sure and improve it in order to make sure it does multiple strokes. And we would make an alternate design for waterproofing. We had an idea to add an extra wall in there just to ensure that it was completely waterproof and there would be no damage to the components within. All right, in terms of our overall experience in this class, that was really one of our main focuses when actually taking it, is we just wanted the experience that is so amazing in this class. So we really learned a lot about the designing process. A lot of what you do with SOLIDWORKS here is to comes, gives you a outline of what you want to do, and then you duplicate it. You don't really have to build anything for yourself. You get a little bit of that in engineering design with the gear cards, but it's still a basic idea that you already have, and you just have to build it into your own. 
this was more we had our, our own idea and we had to build it completely on our own. So it was just kind of learning in that designing process was a huge part of this class for us. As well as for me especially, I got to branch out. I didn't think it would exactly enjoy coding, to be honest, but it was really cool for me to be able to branch out like that and learn something new because that's a part of engineering. You really have to develop new things and learn new things in this. And finally, we learned timelines are so important. It was really important that we tried to really maintain our timeline and kept up with it because if it, even if we got a little bit behind, we became overwhelmed with because we had classes and swimming and work on top of all of this. So if we even took like a day off in class, it really pushed us back on our timeline. Now we're gonna have show slides for our bibliography. It's quite long because we have career comparison, all our research. A lot of stuff, so now you can ask questions. Um, we try to put on the device. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> How much does it cost? We would say it would probably cost around $100, which the garment swim is like $140, and ours would be more accurate than that one. So, much also, better choice. a little temple trainer that just keeps in your ear water swimming is $40. So, if you want to see the range. Um, just coming back to the programming, so I know it's kind of your first experience with it. Um, is there a specific language you'd want to learn as you move forward? Honestly, I don't know if I want to do coding anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so probably not. <laughs> um, were you able to actually test it in any sort of environment and determine like, how accurate it was? So we were able to, you know, I was only able to collect data and then there's something between two languages that I was never able to figure out. Like it collects data and the application works, but there's not a connection. The Bluetooth works, but it doesn't interpret the data correctly yet. And that's a part of the equations that are in there. So that's a large problem. So we got our objectives down, but we didn't get that one piece left. Okay. What have prevented you from taking the CSWP? Um, time. I just read, I practiced for it, but I never actually made the time to actually take it. Do you? So that's my fault. I haven't used SolidWorks in sophomore years, so he did what he did. Do you tend to try to finish? Yeah. In three weeks. <laughs> so when you, uh, you flip after that, you hit the wall, you change direction, right? So you said the Bluetooth doesn't work underwater. So what happens during that? So it, the connection is briefly broken, but then after that it does a data dump. So it sends all the information as soon as the 